That was my packaging test. Hopefully it passed. Well, she seems to be okay, but before we look at that sleek, sexy beast, we've got a battery, and looks like we have a second battery. DRC always puts a list of parts in these owner's manuals. Very detailed drawings with all your part numbers. We've got our charger, our cleaning brush, extra steering and upper suspension linkages, and extra spur gear. That's kind of interesting because I have actually never broken a spur gear on one of these. And I've had a few of them. I've got this one, which has an ultra-powered brushless motor in it, and this one that has an ultra-powered brushless motor in it, and this one, which is still stock. Wow, even an extra pinion gear. And of course, wheel nut wrench, screwdriver. We've got extra body pins, wheel hexes, wheel pins, and some extra suspension screws too. Now that's funny, these are plastic wheel hexes, the ones on the car, I already peeked at them. They're metal, but they're just spares, so, you know, get you through the day. Now this is a surprise, I did not know. It kind of obvious being that there's three of these in here. This is a 3S battery, and it's 1500 milliamp hours. So we should get decent runtime out of this and a good amount of power. We're gonna test all that, of course, in this video. Now it is a lithium ion battery, not a LiPo, so there's still room to upgrade from here. Now this new truck looks very similar to this truck that we just reviewed a couple weeks ago. It actually has two brushed motors in it. This one's a completely different story. Again, DRC kicking butt with not having us have to put stickers on. Remove that sticker, which is just telling you to remove the plastic film. But I usually don't do that right away because it helps protect the body for your first time taking it out. Now there's a few things that I've always really liked about this chassis. For one, they're super easy to work on. It takes no time at all to replace almost any part on this car. Replacing a differential takes less than five minutes and the differential gears and cups are all metal so that's if they even break on you. The pinion gear as you saw is metal, the spur gear is plastic, but like I said I've never had a problem with one of those plastic spur gears and it even comes with one. And I guarantee you my brushless motors in the those two are much more powerful than this one. Now those motors were also pretty pricey though. It has steering and suspension links that are so flexible they could teach yoga, which makes them a whole lot more durable. Even though it came with extras, I've never actually broken any of those. Same with the ones on the rear. When you have parts that flex that much, they really don't break easily. Because they just bend instead of snap. There is no bend and snap, it's just bend and bend back. Physics. And while an argument could be made that that might make for some funky handling if you're taking high speed turns, but it really does handle pretty well too. It's got a nice big floppy servo saver right there on the top of the servo built into the arm. And since it's such a flexible plastic all over throughout the car, it has a center plastic chassis brace to help stiffen it up just a little bit. Now, even though this only comes with a 3S battery, well, two 3S batteries, I am gonna run it on 2S first because I do have a feeling that it's going to have some heat issues on 3S. Maybe it won't, and I'll be really happy if not. But that way you can compare speeds and performance overall with both. It is a 45 amp ESC, and I really prefer to see 60 amps when you have 3S going on. It does have a heat sink on the ESC, and of course on the motor too. And this ESC is pretty large compared to most, so that might help dissipate heat better. But we're gonna find out for real if it works well in just a minute. It's got metal axles, metal drive cups, CVDs all the way around, no dog bones to easily fall out if there's a problem, metal stiffener plate underneath, more flexible plastic in the bumper, LED headlights, but it's got friction shocks. I will say that these shocks aren't that bad. They do perform okay. I've had much worse, but come on. You've got a brushless car straight out of the box and it runs on 3S and you didn't put oil filled shocks on it? Come on now, you might as well put square wheels on it too. But not to worry, I have a solution. These are really good oil filled shocks and they're pretty darn cheap, especially if you get them on sale. I'll put a link to them at Banggood and on Amazon. They fit very well. They actually raise the ride height like four millimeters. So if you decide that you need to upgrade the shocks, these work really well. And you can even get them in blue instead of red. But this is a really dirty car we have beat the holy flopping shingles out of these things and they take it really well yeah things do break that's gonna happen no matter what no matter the car and no matter your driving style we have several videos running these cars really hard if you're curious on seeing what we've done to them before but we're not gonna be easy on this one in this video like I said we're gonna run it on a 2s battery first this is a very standard 2s battery for a car like this so we're gonna get that installed we're gonna throw this body shell on there pop some AA batteries in this controller which you do have to supply yourself and then take it outside for a glorified performance and beatdown test. Yeah, 
time for our speed test. 17.7 miles an hour. Keep in mind that's only with the 2S battery. All right, do a jump. Let's well, <laughs> go, go that way. We got a little over 15 minutes with that 2S battery, so now we're gonna take it out and throw the three cell in there. Twenty five point seven. Ah. Oh, that was a good one. Did a little Tigger hop. Sorry. Yeah, oh, missed. Oh my God. Oh my. Ooh, that's got to be the equivalent of a curb stomp. Nice. Max turn. Nice one. Five year old can handle it. Oh, man. this thing is getting beat up. Yep, we'll check it out when we're done. Yeah! Oh, battery's dead. Alrighty then, just a few facts I wanna go over with you first. I think it's pretty apparent that we were not easy on this thing at all. But I'll start with the fact that the 2S battery that we put in there lasted roughly 15 minutes and that 3S battery that it came with lasted about 20. That's pretty standard for this battery, and that's a pretty good driving time for that 3S. Now the motor did get pretty hot, but I don't think it got any hotter than the brushed versions of these cars just running on a 2S battery. So as long as you're careful, you give it breaks every maybe 15 minutes, especially if it's a hot day, you should be fine there. And again, with this battery, we hit 17 miles an hour. So it's not ultra impressive on the 2S battery, but the 3S, definitely wakes it up and we got 25 miles an hour in change. It was much livelier, much more fun to whip around. Got some pretty good air off the ramps. We did have a wheel nut loosen up on us a little bit. So putting some Loctite on those wheel nuts will help keep that from happening. 
and just checking them every few minutes is a good idea on pretty much any RC car because it's pretty common for that to happen. One of the wires for one of the headlights pulled out and one of these shocks is leaking a fluid of some sort. These do have an oil in them, but they really do not operate on oil. It's really just in there for lubrication, I guess. So that's not a big deal. I'm probably gonna be upgrading these anyway, like I mentioned earlier. One of these control arm screws is starting to back out just a little bit. So keeping your eye on those is a good idea too. Also keep in mind the kit can with a few extras. Now with all of those hits that you saw this thing take, there's no damage to the car except that wire on the headlight. The bumper's not broken. Those Yoga Master suspension links aren't broken. I did not have any differential issues. Everything still operates exactly like you'd want it to. The only thing is the body took a little bit of damage. We've got a crack on both rear wheel wells. And then you can see the crease here because one of those hits took a direct face plant right into the windshield. Oh my. But even without crashes like that, bodies will start to crack over time. I usually recommend reinforcing them a little bit. I have a few videos on doing body shell reinforcements. Overall, I'm really happy with this car. I don't think the brushless adds any speed to this one. I don't think they put a very fast motor in it, but what it does help with is temperature. It doesn't get as hot as the brushed motor does, so it can take the 3S without blowing up within reason. Now, if you decided that you want one of these cars because they do handle crashes well and they're durable, but you think you want it to go faster, what I would recommend is buying one of the brushed version ones that are a lot cheaper and then upgrading the motor. I also have videos on that. I'll try to link those in the description along with some of the options that you get because they actually have several different body shells that you can get on this chassis. So I'll link as many of those as I can in the description along with some motor kits that I know will fit. It'll be like a build your own RC car, Buffet. Now here's one of the examples that I'm talking about. I have taken some parts off of this so it's not quite together, but they even have some metal parts available. Knuckles, shock towers, they have some steering components as well, I believe. A whole lot of different body shell options. There's my big powerful hobby wing brushless motor. So you really do have a lot of great options with this chassis. I hope you found this review helpful. I hope you join us for the next video. Have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.